It's been uh, about two years now since I've moved to Zimbabwe from the UK. So in this video, I want to talk about my experiences so far. Do I like it? Do I regret moving here? How is the economy? Is it safe here? Are there any opportunities if you are to uh, come to Zimbabwe from the diaspora? So that's what we're going to be discussing in this video. So first of all, let's talk about the economy. Oftentimes when you hear people speak about uh, Zimbabwe in particular, they talk about the economy being very bad and that's the reason why they wouldn't want to move here to Zimbabwe. Now here's my take on this. Now what I'm going to discuss right now is my experience and also what I've heard sitting down with people who are successful in business in what they think about Zimbabwe. So first of all, this is one of those questions that I asked when I got here. The economy is bad, so how can we do business? That's the question that I asked one of the successful entrepreneurs here in Zimbabwe. And his answer was very surprising because he said to me that majority of the money in Zimbabwe is all in the informal sector. And mostly when people calculate the economy, they base it on the monies that are in the banks and everything that's, that's legit going through the banks. So obviously, if you calculate everything based on that, you're going to realize that there isn't really a lot of money here. So the conclusion then will be the economy of Zimbabwe is very, very bad. But there is a lot of money on the ground circulating and you can see it in fact i've seen it myself now the question is my take what's my take on that what's my take on uh, that way of looking at things well what i also noticed is yes to a degree it's true because when i look at um, how things are moving on the ground i think that's true that the money is here on the ground but it's not in the banks but there's a lot of money now there's also another bracket of money that's circulating here in Zimbabwe and that is remittances so if you look at uh, over I think it's two or three billion coming from the diaspora again that's money that's within the people it's not money in the banks it's not money in the banking system and so on so that way I think it is true that the money is here on the ground now, how else can I measure, or did I measure that the economy is actually not too bad? Well, if I look at uh, how people are spending money, if I look at the developments that are happening in this country in terms of construction, neighborhoods, new neighborhoods being built, I go into the supermarkets and they are all full of groceries, uh, petrol stations, everything is fine. So if the economy was really bad, would all these positive things be happening? That's my question. Now, I'm posing this as a question because I am not a, um, an economist. So please do correct me on that one. Or you can educate me on that one. How does a country with a bad economy have all those things happening? Okay, so let's talk about um, setting up a business here to sustain yourself. Because obviously, if you're going to be coming to... Uh, Zimbabwe from the diaspora you need a way to sustain your lifestyle so the way I look at it is there are a lot of opportunities in business in fact I don't think there is anywhere in Europe that you can go and start a business very easy without encountering a lot of competition and also very hard regulations and startup costs I would say Every, anywhere in Africa, it's a massive opportunity to set up a business. You can make it look very professional. You can brand it because from what I see on the ground here, there is very little branding. There is very little professionalism in a lot of the business that we see here. But if you can cater for uh, just a minority in the diaspora, for example, and provide them with services here on the ground, you brand it, you have a business which is uh, truthful, you have a business that is uh, very professional, I think you can definitely make it here. Definitely. Because people have money, but a lot of uh, 
companies and a lot of people that are setting up businesses here, they lack professionalism and they're also not very truthful when they do business. I had an encounter with a uh, problem where I bought a solar system from a company in my, uh, in my local neighborhood. At the time, I thought oh, I was helping small businesses in my neighborhood, but it turned out that they were very untrustworthy, very unprofessional. And in the end, I had to go to a proper company that provided a very good service. Now, as you can see, if you come in and you provide a business that is transparent, that is efficient, that is uh, trustworthy, definitely there are opportunities of um, really creating a brand and a company that will uh, really, really, really thrive here. Because at the end of the day, you're always going to get consumers. So you as an entrepreneur, you need to create something that people will love and something that people are going to um, want to uh, work with. Now, when we take a look at how you can actually make your business work, well, this is where you need to uh, focus on marketing. Again, if you're coming from the diaspora, it's very, very easy because you have exposure to how things are done in the West. And if you take uh, those cues, you bring them over here, definitely you can make things work. Why, again, I recommend setting up a business, and there are so many types of business that you can uh, set up over here. You just need to make it professional. You just have to be trustworthy. And just by doing that, your business will thrive here. But in terms of will you make money when you are over here, definitely uh, you will make money. There is a lot of money on the ground floating. I see this every day. I mean, sometimes when, uh, when you look at the end of the month, pretty much going through uh, the city center, it is very difficult because everyone is spending money, people have money, and there's, a, like I said uh, earlier on, there's a lot of money in the informal sector, people are making money um, uh, in their small businesses, and they spend it. So, yes, there are opportunities, big time. The other thing also I want to mention is, if you are running a business, it's going to be very hard for you to save monies here. So, for example, let's say, um, you have a business running and this business is making a lot of money and you decide to keep this money in the house. That's not a very good idea because uh, if you get robbed, pretty much your money is gone. But if you're coming from the West, you're coming from the diaspora, you can actually set up a business in the United Kingdom and just find a way to make sure that your business is putting money into your account in the diaspora. So over here, you can just withdraw it when you need it. Now, how do you do this? Well, my uh, idea or my suggestion is if you can provide people back here with a service and you're targeting the diaspora as your market, that's the best way to do it because then your customers will just pay uh, whatever they, uh, the cost per whatever product you are providing into your UK account and then you provide the service over here on the ground. Very, very easy. No stress, no headache. You don't have to worry about traveling with money. You don't have to stress over that. At any point, if you need some money, you withdraw your money over here through uh, World Remit, Western Union, Mukuru, and so on. So that to me is a very, very simple uh, business that can be set up and that can really work. And this can really work for you. So now let's talk about uh, people saying, well, if you set up a business, the government will come in and get it from you. I think these, this is uh, fear-mongering. A lot of people uh, try to make things political, and I really don't like that. Even on this channel, if you notice, the moment things goes, uh, uh, go political, I pretty much block it because in a lot of cases, we try to find excuses for not uh, taking action because we have to find someone to blame or something to blame. I'm not here advocating for any uh, government whatsoever. I'm saying if you have the ability to set up a business, set up your business. I'm pretty sure uh, any government would love you to set up a business, even in the United Kingdom, because they take taxes from you. So I don't believe that if you set up a business, then the government is going to come and get it from you. That's ridiculous. Let's talk about um, just the general safety in this country. Now, I hear a lot of people saying, oh, well, it's not safe. Uh, here in, um, in Zimbabwe, 
to be honest with you, I think this is one of the safest places you can go in. In fact, uh, one time my son <laughs> went to Mbare, you know, with, um, uh, with my father-in-law. He spent the whole day there. No stress, no worries. And he was, yeah, he was really cool about it. So, yes, I'm not saying be stupid and walk in the middle of the night, you know, in a, in a road where there's no street lights. No, I'm not saying that. But generally speaking, you don't need to worry about uh, your safety over here. You're pretty much okay. And um, the other thing as well is obviously you need to uh, be aware of your environment at all times. But generally speaking, this is a country which is you know, pretty safe. And I would highly recommend anyone who wants to uh, set up anything here or move over here to uh, really do more investigations on this and not listen to people just typing, you know, on social media. This is a very good place to start your business. There's less competition and uh, there's more opportunities to set up something that becomes very professional. Okay, so let's talk about the cost of living. So from my experience, the cost of living here is actually pretty, pretty good because let's start with the electricity bill. For me, I was running an incubator and as you know, the incubator takes a lot of electricity because it has uh, heat elements. And I think at the time, this was last year, this was about um, $25 per month. So if you exclude the, the incubator, it's probably gonna be less than that. So imagine $20 per month, $20 just for electricity. It's crazy. But now, on the other hand, if you live in an area where the electricity goes a lot, well, that's going to be a challenge. But if you're coming over here to live here in, uh, in Zimbabwe, for example, you definitely have to look into getting a solar system because there are times you're going to need a constant supply of electricity and the solar system actually works. For me, <laughs> it has been magical having a solar system because I don't even know when the electricity is there or not because my solar system gets me from the morning till the next morning. So it's actually very, very good. So I would encourage you to do that. But despite that, the electricity is very, very cheap. Secondly, it's the gas for cooking. So if you have an, electricity, an electrical stove, then you may want to use a gas stove if the electricity keeps going, because then that way you're not uh, interrupted when you want to cook. So yes, you need gas and gas is cheap. I think a five kg gas tank will cost you about $10 and that will last you quite a bit, <laughs> quite a bit. So again, that to me is a no brainer. It's very, very cheap. Now let's talk about food. Again, on food, I'm probably different to uh, a lot of people. I like eating fresh uh, vegetables and meat. I don't really eat junk food like Cerevita and all that kind of stuff. So my bills are quite low. They are not uh, that high. So that way I save a lot of money. My vegetables, I grow them in my own garden. Eggs, uh, I do buy sometimes from the supermarket, but again, it's uh, yeah, pretty cheap. So in terms of that, I would say in a week, I'll probably spend, uh, right now my family's over here, so I'm probably spending about $20 per week for, um, yeah, for food. And that's to be honest on the more on the extreme side because uh, we, they, my kids normally buy a few junk things, you know, but if you want to keep something, you know, your, your bill very basic, you can get by with $20 a month. Now, try and compare this to the UK. The main disadvantage when it comes to your groceries and food is in the UK, there's two ways of buying your groceries. One, you have to buy it from the supermarket or from a local farm shop. But majority of people will have to go to the supermarket. Well, over here, we have people selling vegetables on the side of the roads, and that is definitely cheaper than how much you would get it from the shops. So you can really get by 
buying vegetables on the streets. Uh, even sometimes you can buy things like even uh, meat, fish and so on. So it is pretty good. So in terms of the cost of living, it's not too bad. When it comes to the fuel, again, the fuel is uh, not too uh, expensive. I think it's um, $1.40, $1.50 uh, per litre. And that's pretty cool. So the cost of living here is not too bad. Now, if you decide to live, let's say, in the village, well, <laughs> that's even better because everything pretty much comes from the, from the land. Anyway, guys, I thought I would share this information with you so that you have an idea of uh, the cost of living or how to set up a business over here. And by the way, these are my opinions. Uh, so uh, let's discuss this in the comments box below. If you have um, your views or any questions, let's share them in the comments box below. Anyway, guys, thank you very much for watching. I appreciate you uh, leaving all your comments. It helps the channel grow and also do hit the subscribe and the bell notification because by doing so you'll be notified when i release new videos until next time thanks for watching and i'll see you again in the next one take care